with a record jackpot upcoming, now seems like an excellent time to talk about the game theory of Powerball. First question, is Powerball profitable? Well, despite the really, really, really large jackpot, the answer is still no. The math is pretty complicated, but here's the gist of it. To win at Powerball, you have to select 5 numbers between 1 and 69, and then you have to select another number, a Powerball number, between 1 and 26. The odds of getting all of the numbers right in the drawing are 1 in 292 million. If you want to take advantage of this, if you think it's going to be profitable, you should buy one of every single combination of numbers. This guarantees that you'll win the jackpot, and also has some tax advantages that I'll talk about in a second. To do that, you need a lot of money. Every Powerball ticket costs $2. This is a $2 bill, so it will get you one ticket. This is a screen full of $2 bills, and it's nowhere near the amount of money that you need to buy that many tickets. Every rectangle on your screen now is equivalent to one of the previous screens. We're not there yet. Every single rectangle you see on your screen now is equivalent to one of the previous screens. We're not there yet. Every single rectangle you see on your screen now is one of the previous screens, and we're still not there yet. We need 14 of those rectangles to finally be at about 292 million tickets. This will cost you roughly $584 million to accomplish. But again, you are guaranteed to win the jackpot under those circumstances. The bad news, though, is that other people are competing. In fact, based off of current jackpot estimates, lottery officials are expecting 413 million other tickets to be sold, not including the spending spree that you just went on to get all of your tickets. We'll talk a little bit more about how this number is probably way lower than it should be, but that's a conversation for a few minutes from now. Let's suppose that 413 is right. Well, we can use something known as the binomial distribution to estimate how many other people will be winning the grand prize along with yourself. If you're interested in the details, you should check the video description below. I have a blog post that outlines this math in great detail, far more detail than we can go over now. Anyway, if you go through all of that math, what you expect to win in terms of your jackpot is about $525 million. All calculations I'm going to be doing here are in lump sum. $525 million is a lot of money, but it's not quite yet at the $584 million that you had to spend to get here. But you're not done making money. In fact, even if you don't get all of the numbers right, there are smaller prizes. If you get five numbers but not the Powerball, you win actually quite a bit of money. And even if you get the Powerball and nothing else, you still win a small amount. And the combination of all of these other tickets is non-trivial. It ends up being about $93 million in other winnings. If you combine this with the jackpot winnings you're expecting to get, you end up with $618 million coming into play. Now you might think that you have found some sort of profitability here, but we're not quite there yet. After all, Uncle Sam wants you to pay your taxes. The good news though, as I've said before, is that we can get out of some of these by using a tax deduction. You just spent $584 million on tickets. These are lottery losses, and you can declare them as gambling losses. This means that the actual amount of money that you have to pay is going to be lower because your income is lower than it appears based off of all of these losses that you are incurring. Furthermore, you can move yourself to a state that doesn't actually tax any lottery winnings, and if you're going to be spending $584 million on all these lottery tickets, I'm pretty sure you can get your butt to one of those states to avoid another 10% or so coming out of the state of New York. All told, the tax bill is actually remarkably small given this deduction and the way you can avoid state taxes. You only end up paying about $47 million in expectation to the government. Unfortunately, this dooms the enterprise. Even under the optimistic assumption that we're only going to be competing with 413 million others, your net profit is negative 13 million. What's interesting, though, is that given that you spent $584 million to get here, a net profit of a negative $13 million, a loss, isn't actually that much. Gambling right now on Powerball really isn't that bad of a bet. Now, the bad news here is that it's still negative. Is there any way it could be positive? Well, here are some optimistic conditions where that could be the case. If the jackpot, not including anyone else getting involved, is $850 million, 
and we are expecting about 750 million other tickets to be sold. That would get us there. You, in fact, would be expecting a small net profit under those circumstances. The problem is that if you were to be here, this situation would collapse in on itself. We wouldn't actually have 750 million other tickets being sold. We would have more tickets being sold. And we kind of know this based on history. There's a long story, and I'm not going to get into it right now. It's actually very interesting, and maybe it should be the subject of another video later. A situation occurred about a decade ago in Massachusetts, where a bunch of groups realized that one particular state lottery was actually profitable on a somewhat regular basis. But because so many groups realized that this was the case, they all kept pouring money in it, and this was diluting the amount of money that could be gained by gaming the system. So much so, in fact, that eventually some of these groups dropped out because it was no longer profitable anymore. This is good if you're an economist. This means that all of your theories about there's no such thing as a free lunch and there's no free money on the ground, this is what's going on here. All of the profits caved in because it was so easily available. Other people came in to suck it up, and suddenly all of those profits went away. And this is why it's unreasonable to expect that you would have 750 million others competing for a lottery that was profitable. Based on it being profitable, we would see more people getting into the lottery. Well, that's it for whether a lottery is profitable or not. What about some other interesting questions about Powerball? For example, what are the best Powerball numbers? Well, as it turns out, it doesn't matter what numbers you pick. The odds of you winning are always going to be 1 in 292 million. There is something you can do, though, to change how much money you would expect to win, given that you're winning. Let me illustrate this with a simple example. Imagine that we had a single lottery that involved $4 million, and just you and one other guy were playing. Furthermore, there are only two different numbers you can choose. You can choose ticket A, and you can choose ticket B. Each has a 50% chance of winning. Suppose for the moment that your competitor chose ticket A. Which ticket should you choose? Well, if you choose ticket A, you expect to only win $1 million. That's because there's a 50% chance that ticket A will be drawn, and if ticket A is drawn, your opponent has also selected ticket A, which means you're splitting the $4 million revenue with him. So $4 million divided by that split two ways is $2 million times 50% chance of winning. That gets you at $1 million. In contrast, if you choose ticket B, there's still a 50% chance that you win, but when you do win, you win by yourself. So that means you get twice as much money as you would before. Under these circumstances, you should choose ticket B. This is what we call in game theory a coordination problem. It's actually got an interesting implication once we get back into a more complicated real world. Those numbers between 32 and 69, those are pretty good in comparison to numbers 1 through 31. That's because people have birthdays, and those birthdays range between 1 and 31. They like to select those numbers, which means 32 through 69 aren't as selected as much. Maybe you've heard about this birthday thing and you know to avoid it already. Here's a more interesting thing that you might not have heard. A few years ago, a large group of individuals all had a fortune cookie that produced the same numbers. As it turns out, they don't print different numbers on those fortune cookie lottery numbers. They all played these numbers, and those numbers ended up winning. Not the grand prize, but a second prize that was worth $100,000. 110 people, each winning $100,000. That's good money, but think about what would have happened if they had won. You would have had the grand prize, the jackpot, split 110 different ways. In fact, if they had all taken the lump sum, then each individual share of that jackpot would have only been about $122,000, only marginally more than the second place prize. What this means is that you shouldn't be using fortune cookie numbers because there's a good chance that someone else is as well, which means conditional on you winning, you're going to be winning less. All right, last question. Estimating Powerball tickets. How do they do that? You might remember earlier I said that currently, based off of the projected jackpot, the lottery officials are expecting 413 million tickets to be sold, or at least that's what they're saying. Now, truth be told, the lottery is very troubled in guessing how much it's going to sell upcoming for this lottery. And that's because we're in uncharted territory. This has never happened before. 
when you're in regular circumstances, it's very easy to project the number of tickets that are going to be sold because this just follows historical patterns. You look back at the previous jackpot of, say, $40 million, you look at how many tickets were sold, and then that gives you a good estimate of how many tickets that you're expecting to sell for the upcoming drawing. Here, they can't do that. Now, you might think that they want to underestimate the amount of tickets that they're going to sell so they're not put into a position where they're offering a jackpot that they can't actually afford to give. And that's true to some extent. But there's also a strategic incentive if you're a lottery official to underestimate the amount of your jackpot. Think about this. Right now, the jackpot stands at $1.3 billion. What happens when that jackpot goes up to $1.4 billion? Well, I'll tell you. You send out a press release. And suddenly, everyone in the media is now reporting on the new record jackpot of $1.4 million. Then the jackpot goes up again to $1.5 million. What do you do? Well, you send out another press release, and suddenly you're back in the news cycle. By setting your initial jackpot estimate low, you can create more and more media coverage, keep putting yourself back into the news cycle by updating that lottery amount to an even higher jackpot total. And that is the game theory of Powerball. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope to see you another time. Take care.